Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I know it's been a couple of weeks with not too many videos, but it has been conference season. It has been a busy old time going around meeting people, talking about analytics, talking about ETL with Spark and Databricks and Synapse, and oh, it's been a busy old period. Now, I've just got back to find a ton of different announcements about various different things. So first one I wanted to cover is Lineage Inside Unity Catalog. Now, we've seen that before, and we've had a quick look at the preview uh, but the big news is that it has now gone generally available. And with the GA announcement, is a load of new functionality that we can have a look at, which is pretty darn cool. So we're going to have a look at that. We're going to check out the blog, have a look at the features, have a look at how it actually works. And that's the plan for today. As always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you're currently doing for Lineage. Are you using UC Lineage? Have you managed to implement any of the REST API integration? Have you built your own lineage thing by scraping the logs and you're now looking at that going, oh, we, we didn't have to do that. Let me know. Always good to find out what people are doing. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at the announcement blog. So as always, there's a big old announcement on the Databricks blog talking about what's actually happened here. And again, as always, congratulations to the team because I know it's always a huge amount of work to get these big new feature rich uh, things just out into the wild with people using it. So various different things, blah, blah, blah. Various people saying how good lineage is, it's all good. Things I wanted to talk about. So firstly, yes, lineage is automatic. It's not a thing that you need to include in your code saying track this, track this, track this. It's gonna automatically scrape the spark logs anytime you run any code on a Unity catalog enabled workspace. And really important, the language support, Python, SQL, R, and Scala. Originally, it was just SQL. So seeing it actually come out and go, well, actually, no, it doesn't really matter how you're interacting. Doing a bit of Python, doing a bit of R, doing a bit of Scala. If you're interacting with Unity catalog tables, this is going to track the lineage for you. And then really importantly for me, uh, it supports both batch and streaming mode. So a lot of my uh, ETL is moving through the early stages of the lake, call it bronze, silver, um, all of that early stuff, I tend to do as triggered streaming. So I tend to be saying, well, auto loader into my uh, bronze table and then delta stream into my silver table. So I always use streaming when I'm actually sort of talking about the early stage of the lake. And it has to support streaming for me to be able to see that lineage. Even if I then have a big old batch query, then turn into my gold layer and create my various different uh, analytical assets. So batch and streaming, both supported, super, super useful. The mix of Python and SQL for me, if it can do all of that, then it can support my lake houses and it can actually do all the lineage that it needs to do. So, great. Uh, there's another really, good, really good point in here. in that because in the implementation of Unity Catalog, the meta store is ripped out of an individual Databricks workspace and held at the account level. So any workspace that is associated to that account level meta store will automatically be able to see everything in Unity Catalog and that includes lineage. So even if you're in an entirely different workspace, you can go in, have a look at the table, and it will say, here's the lineage of how this came from. And this is the workbook in the other workspace where it came from. So really, really good visibility, really, really good cross-workspace collaboration and being able to see all that stuff. Super, super useful. Now, biggest, biggest update, by far the biggest fanfare news. This looks a little bit different to how we saw the preview of lineage because this has columns in there. And that is now automatically part of how Unity Catalog is working. You now have column level lineage and column level tracking. So you can see there's a little bit of highlighting going, where did that uh, particular uh, column go into? Oh, that was used in there and it came from there. So we can now see where a particular column in a table was sourced from and where it is used downstream. That is incredibly powerful and was a real, real pain to do in various other lineage tracking things. You know, so certainly the various different ways we had of integrating with uh, Purview and manually sending things to the catalog or scraping Hive or doing all those things, it could do just about table level lineage, but we didn't have that column level. So from a Spark uh, perspective, this is the first place we've actually had column level lineage in and working, which is crazy exciting for me because I'm depressingly nerdy. Um, more stuff, other things that we can do. So we saw this before. Uh, you know, so it's not just the tables. You can see the notebooks, the workflows, and the dashboards. So if you've done a lot of processing, you're like, right, okay, well, I know that table goes to that table, but where? Where's the logic? Who did that? 
uh, you can go and see. Well, it was in that notebook, it was triggered by that workflow. Or actually, it was a Databricks SQL user in a dashboard that had some SQL as part of it that created the new table in SQL. And actually, you can see that. So you can see all different sides of where people are going and interacting with this stuff. Uh, other pieces are a little, an improvement to security. So if you don't have access to parts of that lineage graph, you'll still see there's an object there. You just won't see anything about it. So if you don't have access to the table that goes into that, you'll see, oh, it goes into something, but I don't have access. That has been masked. And that's based on the table select permission. So we can see if you don't have the select privilege, you cannot see the table it goes into. But you can see it goes into a table. So you can have a look at it. Well, this is used. I know I can't just delete this table because someone else is going to be affected by it. Uh, but just you can't go and dig into it. You're going to need to talk to an admin, talk to someone with the higher level permissions. And then the final piece is they're implemented everything into the REST APIs. So we can go and talk to the Unity Catalog REST API and um, scrape lineage. So we can pull lineage out and include it in our own metadata, include it on our own visualizations, use it to work out various different trigger patterns for ETL. I'm not sure I'd use it for my ETL schedule because it has to be created before I can scrape it. So I couldn't say scrape that, use it as basically a DAG to then go and figure out what needs to run because it wouldn't exist for the first time. So I'd have to do it manually. And do... Yeah, no. <laughs> but a lot of interesting stuff we can do with access to that information, which is really, really cool. And then, yeah, really, really quickly, I tried to dive in. Uh, so the previous demos I've done, I had this kind of quick, um, just just a notebook that's going through and running some stuff. Um, so it's just going to load a load of tables from AdventureWorks. You know, so I've got an AdventureWorks that I've scraped out into JSON. Uh, I'm just going to pull that out, add in some metadata, and land it as delta tables. Again, using save as table, which previously wouldn't have used that much because it's slightly limited. And certainly uh, in traditional Databricks, just always wanted to put it into DBFS unless you were overriding the path. Um, now, using save as catalog into Unity Catalog, it's got its own uh, ADLS Gen 2 if you're in Azure. So it's got its own data lake. So it's saving it into a proper data lake with hierarchical namespace, with proper security. Uh, and I don't need to worry about it. So that's nice and easy. Uh, obviously, that is going in as a managed table, not an unmanaged table. So you need to decide whether you want it to be managed or whether you want it to be unmanaged. So that's going to go in through and work. Then we've got another um, catalog I'm creating called Data Warehouse, which is just a load of just quick aggregation query. So I'm creating some facts and dimensions that they're the loosest possible term of facts and dimensions, but it's a product dimension with a few product fields joining a couple of the product tables together. It's a sales one joining together sales and headers. Um, it's a little customer one, just trimming out some things. Uh, and then I'm doing some summarizing. So I'm saying, well, actually, well, I want to have um, a summary table, which is my total sales. So that means I'm going to see in my lineage, I'm expecting to see a load of original tables, my adventure works tables, and then some intermediary fact and dim kind of tables, and then an aggregations total at the end that's pulling from various different parts of that. So that's what we're, we're expecting to see. Um, there we go. Cool. All went through. Now, I tried to do this demo um, and was looking at lineage while this was happening, but obviously I was dropping the databases and catalogs and oh, that doesn't work so well if you delete all your metadata. Who knew? Um, cool. So based on that, we can now go and have a look. Now, again, remember, I don't need to have a catalog, a, a cluster running to go and see this. So whilst I do have a cluster, if I wanted to look at any sample data, I can go and have a look at lineage. I can go and have a look at the uh, the metadata and the schemas and stuff without any of that stuff turned on. And again, in any workspace associated to the same Unity catalog, it doesn't have to be the same one. So again, I've got my DW schema. So that's when I had my intermediaries, my facts and my dims and things. Then I've got my aggregation table. So we can go and dive into any one of those and have a look. Dim product, for example. And then whoop, hidden over there, you can see lineage no longer has a little preview tick on it because it's no longer in preview. So okay, well, that's what's in my lineage. Yeah, I can see it was using two tables, so raw and raw product and raw product categories, those two. And then downstream, I can see it's using product sales. That all makes sense. That's good. But the nice thing is the lineage graph. The lineage graph is where we can see everything that happened here all together. So we can see for that dim product, it came from those two and it goes to that one. Now, obviously, it's nice when we go and dig out and we, oh, we have a look at the columns in there. Now, this is something I, I found when having a quick dig. So because I had that underscore metadata um, struct, basically because there was a giant nested struct uh, inside my uh, inside my table, it's not really displayed that nicely. Again, it's kind of a little bit, little bit janky uh, in terms of the UI. 
And you can see I've got this. Oh, it's a little bit hidden. Uh, if I bring it over this way. We've got this little lock button. So currently I can't move these tables by default. I can't get them out of my way. But I can hit the little padlock. And then I can now actually just reorganize this. Make it a little bit easier to see. You can see some of the bounded boxes of these various different entities on here aren't quite working if you've got a huge big uh, thing. But again, it's absolutely fine. So you can see all my different lists of my columns. I can then go, well, that product name, where did that come from? I can highlight product name. And I actually should be able to see where it came from. No, I can't see product name. Oh, I could. It was just I was closing the window that was on there. Get that back out of the way. Okay, so we can zoom out of there. We zoom into here. We can now see I've got that dim product, so I can go and highlight these different elements, and I can see that column level linear. So that's coming from weight and it's going into weight. My product name. Oop. Okay. My product name just want to go. Okay. Still, we can see things coming from various different parts of it. And then if we dive over here into our end thing, we can click on that product. And we can see that's coming from there. So name is going into product. We can see that name. It's coming from there. So we can see that kind of uh, lineage tree. Each um, bit of column lineage only goes one hop. So for example, if I click on name here, I can see that it's used by name, but I can't see that that goes into product. So it doesn't show you the entire lineage all the way through. It's just whatever entity that you've clicked on. So in this case, I'm on the dim product name. I can see one below it, behind it, and I can see one in front of it. So just be aware if you're traversing through a very big nested structure, you might have to go, right, that goes to that, click on that, that goes to that, click on that, and you can traverse through the various different structures a bit that way. Uh, the other thing to note is whatever we started with, so we started on this dim product, it will show you by default in this graph anything before it and after it, but it won't, won't go around all of the interrelated tables. So we actually know that in this product sales, type sales doesn't come from our product. So that's like, well, it doesn't come from these tables, but I've got this little plus and I can expand it into the other things that were also related to it, and I can build out that way. So actually we can see, well, the, the full story, if we take everything here, and again, they're all expanding with their little metadata structs. The full story was this. So I had that dim product, like product sales came from fat sales and dim product together. And if I click on total sales, I can then see that came from line total. Click on line total, I can then see that came from my sales or the detail line total. So all flows through. You can see how it all actually works. You can go and traverse this thing a little bit, a little bit awkward in some spots when you've got some very big complex structures. Um, I think basically, unless you, if you didn't have a giant struct, it would actually be quite neat and quite nice. I just happen to have some slightly awkward tables when I'm having a look at it. Uh, but other, otherwise, that is really, really nice. Now, the thing that we don't have in here yet is where these tables came from. Now, obviously, these are delta tables. And we saw in my little script, these are delta tables sourced from a bit of JSON. And we don't have that in here yet. So we don't have, this came from a file, files in this location. These files in this location went through to this Unity table. And then from that table, it went on onwards. So we don't have any anything apart from a Unity catalog table went into a Unity catalog table. Or several Unity catalog tables went into several Unity catalog tables. If it's outside of Unity Catalog, we cannot currently see it in Lineage. But they've said for a long time they want to include all that stuff eventually. So it'll be exciting when we see it. And yeah, that was all I really wanted to show. Just that new Lineage thing. The fact that we can do that full tracking of here's all of my different fields through to where it came from, where did that source from, all the way back, chasing that through our entire structure. And it's pretty damn cool. So yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, the other pieces, again, the other pieces of things that we've seen before, we can see the notebook that it came from. I didn't use a workflow or a dashboard as part of there. Uh, we can see everything that's involved in there. And I think we covered that in previous videos. So yeah, no, really interesting stuff. Um, and that's it. That's all I wanted to show. So again, congratulations to the, uh, the lineage team for actually of getting that live and column level lineage has so much potential. It's so useful. And the fact that we can scrape that, we can pull it out. And then we can put it into other governance tools. We can put it into our own logging. We can use it in lots of different places. We can just use it to show to end users who are using like a Power BI model that sucks from all this data. And they go, where's that come from? It's like, well, here you go. Here's the full breakdown of where all my metrics came from. It's just so useful. So yeah, there we go. 
Um, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Anything you're looking into about Lineage, anything you want it to do that it doesn't currently do. If you're looking at that going, oh, great, but what about... I'd love to know what people are actually asking for, what people actually need. For me, that column level lineage was one of the final ticks going, right, great, I can use it. If I could also see the files that it came from, fantastic. Uh, but I know that's going to be an eventual evolution that we'll get to. Cool. And then until then, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.